Hey, what's up, guys? It's JKK Tag, and today we're back at it again with the very best Mega Knight Ram Rider deck in the game. This is my all time favorite deck at the moment. You end up having Snowball and you end up having Poison for all the air decks, whether it's Lava Hound Clone or Lava Hound Balloon, you will win the game. I also feel like Ram Rider is the best win condition at the moment and the most reliable. It always gets hits when you don't expect it to. And I just love this deck for combating Bridge Spam or any type of Royal Hogs decks with Mega Knight guards, and bandit, you're always going to have great counter push potential. So check out this deck for 12 win grand challenges or hit it up on the ladder and let me know how it ends up working for you down below in the comment section. We got a game against someone that is already rocking Lava Hound. So we want to go same lane with Inferno Dragon, rush opposite with the Ram Rider. It's going to have Bar Barrel, so it's telling me that it's not going to be Lava Hound Balloon. It's most likely just going to be a Lava Hound spam deck with Flying Machine, one of those decks. Inferno Dragon is going to put in a lot of work. I can poison here to kill the Flying Machine and also kill some of the pups. We don't really care too much about the uh, guards on the left-hand side. It's going to be around equivalent damage. Not too bad, not too shabby. And we actually got more damage on the left-hand side than he did on either of our towers. So this could be a dynamic game because it is a Lava Hound deck. But I am comfortable in this matchup. So I want to end up going for guards here. It's going to go for the Inferno Dragon. So seeing the Inferno Dragon out of cycle is phenomenal for us. It's one of the cards I hate playing against. I'm going to go Bandit here because he doesn't have guards. He's probably going to have to Tombstone. Goes in for a Miner, so he doesn't even have Tombstone. This is good. So I want to go in for the Inferno Dragon here. And then I want to end up going in for Minions right on top of the Inferno D. If I have to, I will go in for a Poison. If he's like... Yeah, okay. So he's going to make me Poison. Otherwise, that Inferno Dragon would not die. And I just want all the pups to die as well. So the Poison just made perfect sense. I can go in for a Ram Rider because I think the Inferno Dragon stays alive. He doesn't have Mega Minion since he has Inferno Dragon with this deck, so that is not going to be too beneficial on defense to offense conversion, but the Inferno Dragon definitely demands some presence. Since he did go for the Barb Barrel, I can go for guards, and now he can't kill this on defense to offense. When it applies aggression, he's not going to be able to kill it immediately, so I want to follow up with Bandit as well. Maybe we can end up taking Tower here. He's going to end up having to go for a Miner, and the Miner is not going to be enough. The Bandit will pulverize through and take the Tower. This is really good for us. So since he's going to go in for another Lava Hound, I'm just going to go same lane. I don't want to rush opposite. I see a lot of people just like heavily go opposite in situations that you don't have to. It's not worth it. Like he's going to go Baby Dragon and then I just want to go Ram Rider here. So then the bats uh, or the minions don't end up dying. He's going to Poison here as well. And I can Snowball everything back and we're going to be fine. He's going to wait and then Snowball everything back. See, I didn't have to rush opposite. I could successfully defend because I knew his card cycle. I knew that it wasn't going to be an issue. Sometimes your best answer to a good defense is a good offense. But, you know, I, I think that in this situation, there was no reason for me to play really aggressive because I could definitely lock down the W. And the Ram Rider just slows down his push, so he can't even get close to my tower. So, GG, well played. And peace out, Girl Scout. Your pups do not pop anywhere near my tower. And that's all it takes to win the game against Lava Hound players. Use your Inferno Dragon in combination with your Poison and Minions on defense. And you'll always win. We're going to go in for a Snowball here to kick off the game. This guy is going to end up going in for a Mega Minion, so it's definitely going to be a tank deck. Hopefully it's going to be Golem or Lava Hound. We'll have to wait and see, though. Inferno Dragon will be shielding us, and he's going to end up having Golem. So, so when we see Golem, I actually want to go into him because I want to keep the Inferno Dragon alive. Maybe we can get that right on top of the Golem. That's the ideal situation for us. If we're able to kill the Golem here, that would be really good. Looks like that's exactly going to happen. I don't do this too often, but I had an Inferno Dragon already going at him, so I want to take advantage of it. We go guards here. I can also Mega Knight. Because if I went for minions, they would just die to the Baby D. And he doesn't have Mini Pack and Cycle, so I'm assuming he doesn't have another Mini Tank like a Lumberjack. Oh, he does have Night Witch. Okay. was expecting him not to have that, but he did. I'm going to try to time this. Okay. Not gonna go him in front of that. I guess the snowball was meh. It's okay though. I had to cycle anyway. He's probably gonna go for golem, so now I go opposite lane. He's gonna have mini pekka as well. Bar Barrel is interesting because now he has to mini pekka this bandit, and then I can go for minions after and then go rare rider. He's gonna mini pekka? No, he's gonna go for a NATO. That's not gonna pull. Okay. He's gonna mini pekka this. I don't have snowball. It's okay though. If I had Snowball, I'd be able to fully kill the Mini P.E.K.K.A. That should be Tower, though. Is he Mini P.E.K.K.A. on offense here? We'll have to wait and see. What is this guy going to do? He's a mad lad. 
He really is. I'm gonna go in for an Inferno Dragon, then I'm just gonna end up going in for a Poison here on top of the uh, Night Witch. So then I can kill the Night Witch inside the Poison, use my guards to kill it, and then have no bat spawn afterward. That's the ideal scenario for us. Golem will end up dying as well. Inferno Dragon retargets on the Baby D and is like, what are you doing here, Baby Dragon? Know your place, get out of this game. So yeah, Baby Dragon establishing its dominance as the superior dragon. So I don't think that we're going to get a second tower, but if I just cycle Inferno Dragons, he's not able to really go in for a Golem at the river. So see what he does. Looks like he's going to try to rush opposite, which is not a play because now I can just spam you and take your other tower. So it's going to be a 2-1 victory. Like there's no way for me to defend the left-hand side and there's no way for him to defend the right. You know, I could potentially defend the left if I go in for a poison here, kill those bats, and then go guards on top of the Night Witch, and then have the guards, after killing the Night Witch, go back on the Golem. He's not going to take the tower, but did do a lot of damage to it. Yeah, he wouldn't have taken the tower anyway. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. Pleasure playing against you. So when you cycle the Inferno Dragon, you got to keep it alive. you got to get more utility of it, and you got to kill the Golem with it. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. We've got a game against Ahmed. We're going to be sauce out of good luck here. See what's up. See what this dude has in store for us. We see Goblin Gang, so maybe it's going to be Mortar Bait. A little bit scary to play against Warner Bait with this deck because I do not have Bar Barrel, but I'm going to try our hardest to win the game. What you got in store for us, Ahmed? Okay, so you got Balloon. We're going to go sauce out an Inferno Dragon right on top of that. Shut it down. No hits. You want to Snowball? We'll Snowball as well. Not going to happen, all right? Hmm. What do you have, man? All right, you got Mega Minion as well. Minions. Guys, this could be Balloon with Lava Hound. Very well, Balloon Lava Hound deck. End up going for a Ram Rider here. Yeah, it's looking like it. Gonna go for a Snowball here. Maybe we can get the minions on top of the tower as a result. Oh, we get a Ram Rider hit too! Dude, I was not expecting that. He's probably so triggered. You know, it always happens to me. The Ram Rider always gets that hit to me. But for me, it never really happens. I'm so happy. Okay. It's gonna sauce out of good luck. I kind of want to go opposite. I want to play really aggressive here. I don't think he has a good card cycle. I don't think he was able to do that. He doesn't have Inferno Dragon, so we might just take both towers here. Yeah, he's only gonna be able to do Mega Minion, and he might go try to three crown me. But if I go for the Inferno D on top of the balloon, we're gonna be fine. And then I snowball, so then those minions end up dying. And then the Inferno Dragon finishes off the Lava Hound so that I can guards here. Yeah, that was perfect. That was absolutely perfect. Inferno Dragon on top of the Balloon. Snowball so the minions die. And then the Inferno Dragon kills the Lava Hound. Tank the Lava Hound pups with the guards and you win the game. Okay, so that worked out really well. I knew that he was running traditional Lava Hound Balloon so I was able to just circumvent any type of like defense. I could just go in pretty aggressive and basically take out both towers. So now, he has to take two towers. And it's really, really hard to do that as Lava Hound and Balloon. This is the traditional defense that you want to do. You just want to poison here. He's got Lightning as well. Okay, so this is really well played on his end, actually. I'm going to Ram Rider here. I'm going to Snowball everything as soon as the pups pop. Actually, I don't want to do that. I'm okay not doing that. Pups will end up just dying to the tower. I don't want to overcommit because I want to be able to take both towers and assert dominance to the highest degree. The fullest extent, boys. That's what we're about. 2-0 victories. Nothing less, nothing more. <laughs> I guess I, I wouldn't be too sad if I 3-crowned him, but it's not happening. Inferno Dragon here. GG, well played. And peace out, Girl Scout. So I guess in different situations, I would just go same lane as him. But in a lot of situations, it's just best to go and go opposite when uh, you know that they're running Lava Balloon and don't have Inferno Dragon. GG, well played. And peace out, Girl Scout. Pleasure playing against you, brother. All right, this guy goes in for a golem in the back, so we're going to go rush opposite with a bandit and have those two minions assert dominance all over him as well. He's probably going to go bar barrel here. I expect bar barrel. No, he's just going to sack it. I hate golem players to do this, man. They start golem at the start, and they're like, yo, I don't care about my tower at all. Even if you drop six elixir, I'm just going to let it go. So in this situation, I have to poison. I also have to go in for guards on top of the night witch. Otherwise, the bats ruin me. I'm going to have to go for a Snowball because I can't let that Mega Minion kill the Inferno Dragon. He's actually going to go and uh, 
NATO us. So he played super aggressive. That's the most aggressive goal player I've ever seen in my life. Someone that just goes in and NATO's on offense when they shouldn't. I have to go ban it here because I feel like the baby dragon might win. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. I was kind of scared of that. I wanted to work away on the goal might so he wasn't able to uh, get the baby dragon on top of our tower. So we're in a decent situation. It's still kind of sketchy though because our tower is down at 1,500. That's not great. It's definitely not great. And it seems like this guy is just one of the type of players to go for golem in the back. So I wanted to go take a full tower here or do as much damage as I possibly can to his uh, a tower because he might just sack the right and go golem in the back and I don't want that to happen. The Lumberjack and Mega Minion don't respond, uh, do, don't demand any response, especially since the Lumberjack dies on his side. I don't really care about it. Mega Minion only gets one hit. And I want to take the right-hand tower so I don't have to worry about it anymore because he's going to go in for a golem in the back and the left. He's just going to sack it and go golem in the back. He has to, right? Yeah. Oh, he tried to uh, kite it. That's interesting. I don't know why he gave himself like less time. He should have structured his golem push so he had more time with it, but... We know he's probably going to go Mega Minion again, so we're going to preemptively poison again. Go in for a bandit right on top. Might NATO. Yeah, he does NATO. He's going to Mega Minion, so I'm going to go for Minions. I just don't want the Inferno Dragon to die. He will take the tower, so that was a little bit scary. That's why I already started to work away on the left-hand tower. Because I knew he was going to do something crazy like that. I'm going to go Giant Snowball so we can push out the Lumberjack and get more hits. I'm going to go in for an Inferno Dragon. He could end up NATOing this. So that would be scary. We'll see if he does it. He probably will. I want to go minions again. And I just want to keep up the aggression in case he does it. Because then he would be spending all of his elixir. And he for sure loses his tower then. I want a giant snowball here. Get that Ram Rider hit. Please. Mega Minion is going to die. We still have the Inferno Dragon on the map. I want to make sure that we keep the Inferno Dragon alive. So I can counter push with it. Because the Inferno Dragon demands so much of her presence every single time. If you don't have something to distract it, which Golem decks just don't have swarmy bait units, it's so hard for him to deal with it. It's going to go Lightning, and that's a huge overcommitment, in my opinion. And I don't want to drop the Inferno Dragon here, because it will get natoed. I'm going to go Bandit in the middle. We'll see if he drops Golem. I think he does, and then he doesn't have Elixir. So we just severely outplayed him. We knew he was going to Golem in the middle, so I just decided to go Bandit. And then after you drop 8 Elixir, you're obviously not going to have Elixir to defend... Hey, that was a pretty decent ladder push. Let's see if we can get higher next time.